Hello everyone, Back Photography here, back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about a really easy setup that anyone can do to take amazing portraits. And this is going to be not using any fancy equipment like special lights or reflectors or speed lights or anything like that. This is going to be a super simple setup that anyone that's a photographer will have to take amazing portraits. So these are the things you're going to need for this photo shoot. You're going to need some kind of DSLR or mirrorless camera and a lens that has a wide maximum aperture. So any lens really will do something like a 50mm 1.8, 35mm 1.8, 85mm 1.8, anything with an aperture of less than 1.8 ideally or 2.8 will work just as well. We're going to be taking portraits using just natural light. So it's really important that we find a good location and good lighting conditions as we're not gonna have much control over the lighting apart from choosing where we shoot. So we decided to position ourselves in such a way that the light was hidden by those trees in the background and that way we had nice soft diffuse light over the entire scene and that meant that we didn't have any really harsh highlights or deep shadows in our photo. And this is really important when you're shooting natural light, especially if you're going for like a warm, dreamy kind of look. You want the light to be as even as possible because that way you're gonna get really nice skin tones and you're not gonna have any loss of data from really harsh highlights and deep shadows in your image. So now that we've found a nice location to take some photos, let's choose the settings we're going to use for this photo shoot. I want it to be a really warm, dreamy sort of photo shoot. So I'm gonna shoot at the lowest aperture of my Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens, which is f1.4. And that's really gonna blow out the background and we're gonna have some really nice creamy, blurry backgrounds. And that's gonna contrast really well with our subject here, Tylesha. Now let's have a look at a few of the photos that we took in this area. This is probably my favorite photo of the two. Let me know which one is your favorite. And you can see here that the background is super blurry and falling completely out of focus in the back there, but we still have a really, really nice sharp focus on Tylesha's eyes. And you can see in the 200% crop that it's really nice and sharp on the eyelashes. And that really draws focus to Tylesha and leaves all the distractions from the flowers and the background in the background and not distracting the viewer. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a like and subscribe. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm, so thank you very much for subscribing. After we'd shot at the first location for a little while, the sun came out and was ruining the lighting conditions in that area. So we decided to move to these really fancy rocks that were just around the corner. And that's an important tip to remember is that the lighting is gonna be constantly changing if you're shooting natural light outdoors. So an area that might have been really good to shoot at a few minutes ago might change and you might have to move to a different location like we did here. We decided to move into the shade so we could get that nice even lighting even though the sun was still high up in the sky and making some areas a little bit too harsh. I really like these photos because the texture from the rocks adds a really nice contrast between Tylesha and her surroundings. And texture is a really good way of separating your subject from the background and from other things in the photo. So I think that this is a perfect place to shoot and you should find somewhere similar, somewhere that has nice textures to complement the subject of your image. So here are a few images from this area of the photo shoot. I think this one is my favorite photo of the set because the texture of the rocks is interesting and there's not too many distractions in the background. So overall, I think it's a pretty solid image. And all of these photos I'm showing you are going to be available in raw form for you to edit as well. There's gonna be a link in the description to that. As well as that, there's gonna be a link to my new photography course, which I just released this week. It's gonna show you everything you need to know from absolute beginner all the way to an advanced portrait photographer. So if you're interested in that, there's gonna be a 10% discount for the next 30 days. So make sure to check that out as well, link in the description. So now we're gonna do a wardrobe change and also change the location as well. And I think this is a really important thing to do when you're doing a photo shoot because it means that you can have two completely separate looks. And if one of them didn't turn out so well, you have another chance to get amazing photos with the second look and the different location. We decided to shoot here because we thought that the green really complemented the peach color, the salmon color of the dress that Talisha was wearing, but also because we were avoiding the sun again. We were shooting in a shaded area here, which meant we had really nice, even light. And that's super important when you're shooting with natural light. 
And I think that's really important when you're shooting natural light portraits to always be looking for the best lighting conditions in your area. And sometimes that means that you're going to be shooting in the shade. And sometimes that means you're going to be shooting with front light or backlight. It really depends on what time of day you're shooting and also the location that you're shooting in as well. So now let's have a look at a few of the photos we took in this location and then we're going to hop into Photoshop and have an edit on two of the raw files from this photo shoot. So I'm not sure which one is my favorite of these two photos right here. I really like the photo on the left because of Talisha's smile looks really nice, but then there's a few distractions in the background that I'm not so fond of. And then on the right hand side, I really like the different colors of the dress and then of the green door. So let me know which one you think is the best. And now let's go into Photoshop and do some editing on some of the photos in this photo shoot. So if you'd like to follow along, the link in the description is gonna have all the raw files and we can edit all this together. Okay. So here we are in Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is add some clarity to the entire image and then drop the highlights as well, just because we're losing some of the detail in the clouds. Then we're going to get the brush tool and zoom in a little bit and drop the exposures and the blacks of this paintbrush, just so we can see exactly where we're selecting on Tylisha's skin. Because basically what we're doing now is selecting all the parts of the skin that we would like to smoothen. And then we're going to remove the exposures and blacks from the brush and then reduce the clarity. And that will reduce any of the roughness in the skin and just do a quick and easy uh, smoothing of the skin. And then later on in this video, we'll smooth it even more by using the patch tool. But for now, we're just gonna highlight all the areas of the skin that we want to be smooth, making sure to not go over any of the focal points of the photo, like Tylisha's eyes, her lips, that kind of thing. So now that we've reduced the exposure and blacks back to normal, you can see when I slide this clarity slider, it makes the skin more rough or more smooth. So the next thing we're gonna do is reset our brush tool and then just add a little bit of shadow and drop the exposure slightly in Tylisha's hair because we were shooting basically directly into the sun in this photo shoot. And that basically means that you're going to lose a little bit of contrast in your image when you shoot into the sun. So we're just gonna spend a bit of time here adding that contrast and dropping the exposures a little bit just to get some color and depth back into Tylisha's hair. So now that we've done that, we're going to reset our brush tool. But before we move on, I'm going to change the yellows and greens in this image just so I can get a nice, bold, bright green in the background. So we're going to increase the saturation and then play around with the color sliders until we have a nice yellow and a nice green in this image. So the next thing we're going to do is just paint in a little bit more light around Tylisha. We've added a little bit of yellow to this light as well. So it's going to make the image look nice and warm. Make sure when you're adding this kind of light into your image, not to go crazy with it. Otherwise it will look a little bit unnatural, but you can add just a little bit um, to make it a more bold and bright image. So the next thing we're going to do is reset our brush tool again and just add in a little bit more darkness and depth into the image with the brush here. And we're just adding some more darkness into the eyebrows, the eyelashes, a few feature points of Tylisha's face, just so they can stand out from the scene. And those are the things that our viewer is going to look at first. Now what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of redness into Tylisha's lips just by increasing the saturation and also adding a bit of a red hue to my paintbrush. So that's everything we're going to do in Camera Raw. And Camera Raw is just what comes up if you shoot any photo in RAW. So if you're confused about what that program is, it's actually just regular Photoshop, but um, when you import a RAW photo. So what we're doing here is going to be using the patch tool to do even more skin smoothing. And I won't bore you too much with this because it can get quite repetitive. So we're going to fast forward this section and I'll see you in just a moment. So that's everything for this photo. I really hope you like it. Now let's move on to the second photo and see what we can do with that. So for the second photo, we're going to edit it a little bit of a different way. 
I'm gonna add a bunch of clarity to this image because I think that adding that texture to the photo is gonna be really nice. Then we're gonna boost these shadows a little bit just because we have some really deep shadows in this image and we wanna get as much detail out of this as possible. Then we're gonna change the color of the door just slightly so it complements Talisha's dress even more. So we're gonna make it a little bit more blue and then we're gonna boost the saturation of it as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go back to the default panel and then we're going to get the paintbrush tool and then do the same thing we did last time with smoothing the skin. So just resetting all my settings there and then I'm going to reduce the blacks and the exposures so that I can see where I'm clicking on the screen and just smoothing all the parts of Tylesha's skin that I'd like to be a little bit smoother. So the reason that we don't go over any of the hard lines on Tylesha's face or on her fingers or anything like that is because we want to um, maintain those details um, so that her face doesn't look like it's been edited. And we're only changing the smoothness of her skin just slightly just to um, make all of the feature points on her face and on her body even more dramatic. So we're gonna do the arms here as well, and then we're also gonna do the back. And then once we have selected all the areas of the skin we'd like to smooth, we're going to remove the blacks and exposures uh, that we've added in again, and then reduce the clarity about 30 or 40 points. Now you can go further than that, you can make it really, really smooth, but it depends on the situation. And I also think that if you drop it more than about 30 or 40 points, it can look a little bit unnatural. So now what we're gonna do is make Talisha's eyes really pop by adding a little bit of exposure and a little bit of clarity. And not only is that gonna make the eyes brighter, but it's also gonna make them a little bit more colorful as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing again that we did with the last photo, just adding a little bit more contrast and uh, dropping the exposure a little bit on the feature points of Talisha's face. So that's everything we're gonna do in Camera Raw except we're just gonna add a little bit more light at the bottom of Tylesha's body here, just because it was a little bit darker than her face. So now that we've done that, we're gonna jump into native Photoshop and I'm just gonna crop this image slightly just so that Tylesha is in the center of the image. And if you click shift click while you're cropping, it's going to maintain the aspect ratio of your image. So now that we've done that, I'm going to do a little bit more skin smoothing with the patch tool. You can also use the healing brush tool to smooth skin, but I find the patch tool to be a little bit better at blending the textures together. Because if you use the healing brush tool, um, sometimes you can see a little bit of a circular artifact where you've healed the skin. So I'm gonna fast forward this again, so I'll see you in just a couple of seconds. So now what we're doing here, is making a selection of Tylesha, and I'm going to inverse the selection and then add a little bit more blur to the image. And basically I'm just doing this because Tylesha is so close to the door that it's still quite in focus and I really want to remove any distractions from this photo and make the viewer focus on Tylesha here. So I'm just moving the selection of the door around and adding a little bit more blur here and there. So that's everything I'm gonna do for this photo and everything I'm gonna do for both of these photos. So I really hope that you like them. Please let me know which one is your favorite. I'm really happy with how this shoot turned out because we have a whole bunch of different looks and different locations all in the same place. So once again, there's gonna be all the raws for this photo shoot in the description as well as my photography course if you'd like to take your photography to the next level and learn a comprehensive list of everything you need to know from start to finish as a portrait photographer. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.